Hi. <laughs> that is really, really funny how Kim and my hair look alike like that. <laughs> so I have these funny notes here because I don't want to miss anything. So let me just get all set up. Um, and I actually, I wasn't going to even talk about this at all, but sitting in this room right now and um, looking out to you guys reminds me of yesterday morning at this time where I was sitting, um, where you're sitting, but my little four and a half year old was up on stage doing her first Thanksgiving recital. So I'm having kind of like um, an all at once moment, which I'll talk about a little bit um, as we get going. Um, so just try to process that a little bit. Um, First, I want to show you guys a little something. I know you um, came here. It's uh, early. I'm not a morning person, but um, I'm still creative. And it is the morning, so we're OK. And um, it's cold and kind of rainy. It's November. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. And usually by Friday, I'm pretty fried. So um, I don't know about you guys, so I'll try to make this um, fun and entertaining for you. Um, so it is for me as well. And when I got into advertising, there was a little bit of pushback on me when I first um, took the leap um, over. Um, but the interesting thing about it is, and what I want to talk to you today is uh, about something called what I call the hugeness of it all. So there's like big ideas, big places to work, big things that people are thinking about and to me they kind of like all encompass like this huge world that we live in and so um, what I'm going to do is show you some work at the end I'm going to talk to you a little bit about design and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about advertising and hopefully at the end of it we all kind of come to an understanding that it's great to work in advertising as a designer so everyone agree okay um, and what we're doing at Leo Burnett Chicago um, if you're familiar um, I work in a, a group called the Department of Design, and I like to say that we're rethinking design at Leo Burnett Chicago, okay? And what does that really mean? Uh, and what is Leo Burnett Chicago, and what do we do? Um, so I'll let you know. We are an advertising agency that's 78 years old this year, so that's pretty old. Um, and uh, there's my little chart here. That's advertising, so like the world is kind of outside that circle advertising is like like so huge and big um, Leo Burnett is part of a holding company so another crazy word to say to a bunch of designers um, called Publicis and now Publicis Omnicom so we just merged so two crazy big entities merged their wits together so now we can like take over the world of advertising which is like insane um, but that's like the world I live in right now is like these like all, all the bigness everywhere. So, you know, we're getting a little bit closer to my department. Um, then there's Leo Burnett Global. We sit within Publicis Omnicom, okay? So we're everywhere, all over the world, in, you know, any city that you can imagine, there's a Leo Burnett office with either like two or, you know, 2,000 people sitting in it. And then here, I couldn't fit the type into that circle, and I was kind of too lazy to <laughs> try to redesign the chart. But inside that chart, <laughs> inside that chart is Leo Burnett, okay? Leo Burnett Chicago sits inside that little circle, okay? So inside advertising, Leo Burnett Chicago, we're still big, but we're, you know, not super big, but maybe to Chicago we are. And inside there, there's a tiny little dot, okay? And I'm just putting it in the center to make things look good but it's not really like we're in the center of it all, we're actually just part of it, is a tiny little pinprick, and I exaggerated it so you could see it, and that's the Department of Design, okay? So we are like this tiny little tin, pin, pinprick within like this big massive thing called advertising, um, which is crazy, okay? Um, and so in preparation for this uh, event, this lecture, I, I did some research on this idea because I've sort of been keeping my nose down and working for the past couple years and I, I wanted to understand what people were saying about this idea. And it's, as it turns out, there's a lot of bias about designers working in advertising. And I knew that when I got into it, um, mostly because all of my friends said, oh my god, congratulations, you are going over to the dark side. And I thought, oh my god, what's actually happening here? I love the people I'm working with. I, I love the company. It's a great company who takes care of its people. It's been around forever. What do you mean the dark side? Um, 
but you know, Stephen Heller kind of summed it up. Stephen Heller is a really great um, essayist and journalist who writes a lot about advertising and design. And he wrote an article in I in 1995. So um, I am a, ch a child. I'm a product of the 90s. So that sort of dates me. But um, and, and I'm going to paraphrase what he was talking about. It's actually kind of long and kind of heavy. Um, but he says that advertising is the mother of graphic design. Okay, and what I, I what I think he means is. Um, that um, advertising really kind of started it all. Or the idea that we had to get ideas out to the world really kind of, you know, holds graphic design under its arm and like gives graphic design a place to be. Um, and, and what his theory is, is that over the past hundred years, we've spent a lot of time talking about um, advertising, but we call it different things when we're designers. And I know this because I've worked at design firms all around the city. I you know, went to design school. I totally get it. And we usually call it like publicity or promotion or you know, sometimes we call it like marketing. But it's rare that you would work within a uh, design firm, like a big design firm or, or a small design firm, and really like honestly say, oh, I'm going to work on the advertising portion of this. Unless maybe like your client said, I need to place an ad in a magazine, you probably would call it promotion. And what Stephen is saying and what I'm agreeing with is that we should stop doing that. Like that's, that's crazy. So like let's get rid of the bias. There's like plenty of room for all of us to be making good work as designers. And I think that you know, we should be proud of the medium that we're working in, whether you're working for an in-house you know, sausage company or you're working for like a rock star boutique or you're working in advertising. There's like lots and lots of work that needs to be done in the world. And if you're doing it, that means you're doing a good job and you're helping the world become a better place. Um, so I say this a lot, OK? Um, and, and I'm really happy that a lot of people I work with are here today. They're sprinkled throughout the back rows and the front rows. Um, but everything is design, and design is everything. So to me, any kind of bias against design in advertising is really clumsy and old-fashioned. Um, and my mind starts to spin with like lots of questions about why that is. Um, shouldn't everyone's mutual goal to be making good work? Um, why discriminate? what is important to design or not? Why label work important versus other work that's you know, not important? I'm not sure what that even means. Um, and shouldn't good, talented people be trying to change the whole world, whatever sector? Couldn't design thinking add value to this industry, the biggest, most massive consumer-facing entity? So the things that you see out in the world that you, that you hate, that you want to make better, I'm challenging everybody to make them better, to like go work for places and use your, your beautiful talents to make the world a better place by, by getting out of you know, your sector a little bit and growing and trying to do new things. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, and you know, I think the main message here that I'd like to talk about um, right now is um, that um, brands themselves actually really, really need design and designers. And I don't know if you're feeling that all in your jobs right now on the projects that you're working on, but there's really no separation from brands and design. Successful brands have absolute connective tissue with all of the things that help them get fueled, whether it's graphic design or advertising or public relations. All the stuff that we work on in like the creative industry fuels how brands get out into the world. And you know, some of them are doing a great job doing that. So think of the kind of brands you like to associate yourself with and think of those as the best case scenario of the kind of projects that you'd like to work on and try to make all of your projects like that because Everywhere you look is something that we can touch and we can make better in the world. Um, and I, I alluded to this a little bit earlier um, with looking out at you guys and remembering you know, what my experience was yesterday with my daughter. But um, I like to also talk about uh, this idea of all at once, all the time, where you're in the world and you're making things and there are other people making things and it's all big and it's all overlapping and it's all happening simultaneously um, and, and so am I and my story is very different than your story but somehow you know today we wind up 
sitting here together talking about this subject, and we're all kind of doing the same thing. Um, I'll back up a little bit. Um, five years ago, I came to Leo Burnett. It's an advertising agency. And um, I had been focused at that point in my career on freelancing and working for some of my own clients. I had some great clients in uh, education, in architecture, in the social space. I was doing lots of retail work. And um, I just kind of got into this funk where I, I just didn't know what I was doing anymore. I was like making identity systems, making books, making posters for friends. And I, I just kind of got bored. I got bored with talking about you know, that you know, sector and, and that you know, realm of, of what I was thinking about at the time. And I thought it, it just felt like I wasn't really challenging myself to do something new or different or that hadn't been done before by me or, in my, in my opinion, maybe people um, here in Chicago. I looked at New York and I thought of all the great energy New York had and all of my friends who were freelancing all over the city for all different types of firms, advertising, design, um, public relations, um, museums, architecture firms. And I just felt like this like inner like struggle of like, I should not, probably not be working for myself. I should probably be working with a big team and making things happen in a much bigger way than I was possibly doing at that point in my career. So um, I was interested in new challenges and doing something a bit uncomfortable. And um, one thing that you should also know about me is I work on a lot of personal work already. So my husband started um, a small, very small um, arts organization called Lampo. And um, we present experimental sound and intermedia. So this is some like project that we've been working on um, for the past 16 years. I do the design and graphics support for Lampo. We make posters, we make silk screen postcards, we make lots of very intimate tactile things. And I was very comfortable doing that and, and felt like I had a really strong, great creative outlet for myself as like a designer from a human sense that I could really survive if I pushed myself to, to do something a little bit more big and impossible and unexpected. So um, to me, working on things of huge scale kind of balances out the small scale. So that's kind of what I mean about all at once all the time. Like I think that there's room in you know my life to be doing lots of different things, and I'm you know at this point in my career trying not to label myself as somebody who works in the arts or who works in advertising or who works in design. And instead, I I'm just pretty happy to be making things and being connecting with people and to have a lot of energy about what I'm doing right now. Um, this is uh, something I, I want to talk about just for a minute. And I promise you I'll show you some work in, in a couple minutes um, and, and tell you a little bit more about my team. Um, I read something really great a couple months ago. And it moved me so much that I printed it out and I brought it into one of our staff meetings. And it's long. And it's um, something from a guy named Michael Ian Kay. Michael Ian Kay is a great designer. He's um, probably designed many of the book jackets that you guys see out in the world. Um, and, and he's just, he's got like a really great presence about him. And he wrote this beautiful essay about designers and advertising that he published in um, a, a blog called It's Nice That. And I read it, and I immediately connected with it. And I thought, today, I should just read the whole thing, show you guys some work, and go home, because it's really all I think about. But I felt like I couldn't do that, because that would be wrong, and I'd have to call him and tell him <laughs> that I was totally plagiarizing everything that he said. But the, the best part about it that I thought um, that was the most meaningful for you guys was, um, and something that I'm talking about a lot lately, is um, possibly this part of it. And it's uh, advertising scale and reach gives it an implied importance, even when it doesn't deserve it. OK? So sometimes advertising is so big and so massive that it really doesn't connect, or it shouldn't even be that big. It's not even that cool. But you know, on the other side of the coin, without reach, design runs the risk of getting smaller and smaller, talking only to a select group, and becoming increasingly insulated and isolated. 
So that really means something to me because of maybe I just explained the kind of projects that I'm working on, really, really small ones and really, really big ones. There's kind of room for those to come together for you know the, the small projects and the love that you give them, if you could give those to the larger projects. And the larger projects, if you can think about like how they're getting out into the world, if you can you know kind of impose that philosophy on some of your smaller projects and see if maybe you can get them out into the social space a little bo bit more, share them a little bit more. I think that that kind of would help us all come together as like one unit of like makers and thinkers. Um, at least it would help me think about it in a different way. Um, so you're probably thinking, okay, so you work in advertising, we get it, it's old, it's big, um, design has its place, where are we doing that at Leo Burnett Chicago? Um, and really, I think the way to describe this is like really simple. I could describe it on this slide, but then I did some charts to show you really those things. But I, I think it's like, you know, you're putting the capital D in design where, you know, before we got started and the team worked so hard to get us where we are, we were kind of a small D, you know, we were kind of hanging out and design was just like this thing that people tacked on to something. And so there we are a couple years ago, four and a half years ago, we're down there in the, in the right corner, we're a little D. Um, and what does that really mean? So. So in the middle, um, and I didn't label it again because I wanted it to look pretty, but that middle part is Leo Burnett Chicago. Um, and we're kind of four years ago hovering on the outside in the specialty area. So people would say, oh, go talk to the specialists, you know, the designers. Go get your um, PDF presentation made pretty by the designers. And oh, the designers will fix it. Or oh, it's 11 o'clock and that looks horrible. Did any designers look at it? And I would just go crazy because I was like, this is just not cool. You know, you can't act like that. And like, who would want to work here? This is just not, you know, the way a designer was trained. Um, you know, most designers that I know, and, you know, there are a bunch of them, you know, would probably prefer to get in on the beginning of a project, know a little bit more about it, impose some conceptual thinking to it, maybe not, you know, run the entire project from soup to nuts, but, you know, really do their part to make sure that the idea is coming to life instead of, like, at the end, you know, <laughs> decorating and, you know, kind of doing things that didn't feel comfortable. So the idea is to be the capital D in the middle, and there we are. Um, and again, not the actual center, like everyone reports to us and I, you know, have this like big important job and <laughs> all that kind of stuff, but really just like the metaphoric middle where everything should probably be talking about design all at once. So we should probably be thinking about it all the time. We, it's a brand that we're working on. It's, it's Coke or it's um, Hallmark or it's Kellogg's. I mean, geez, these brands are huge. They're like, some of them are like 100 years old and they need like relevance and presence in the world or why are they even existing? You know, they're just like pushing out packaging for people to buy. I mean, that to me is icky. So like it would be better if all of the projects that we had, we, we at least impose some design thinking onto that so the work could get better, you know? It's not like gonna happen overnight, but you could try. Um, and when I got to Burnett, this model wasn't there at all. Again, like we were like hovering outside and you know, outside, um, those guys are like, you know, gaming and like marketing services and like abstract things where like design should not be out there. Design should be in there in the middle. And it's not pretty, like I, I drew those lines and, and I, it's like I didn't even know what to do when I talked about like the process of how we work together. It's a mashup, okay? Every campaign is a little bit different. Every creative director works a little bit differently, okay? Which is true. Um, every brand has a different team on it. And I think there's like 30 maybe different brands at Burnett right now. We probably work on at any given time, maybe 16 or 17. Um, there's just no way to like make a really great succinct process like maybe you might have in a smaller design studio where we can really connect our, our ideas into the creative department because everybody works so differently and we have to be like really nimble and fluid to try to figure out how to get things better and how to make a better, a better way. Um, 
And it's weird because it's weird that this model wasn't there at Burnett, and, and I'm not ashamed too much to admit this, and it doesn't mean that Burnett's old-fashioned or wrong. It just means that Burnett is big and, you know, no one really, you know, had the gumption to really want to change this. Um, but, you know, there wasn't a process here to do this, and there are other design firms and advertising agencies that do have this model going on, that are working, you know, more holistically, that are working, you know, like I said, all at once, all the time, where people are working on top of each other and collaborative and fluid all over the world. And so that should, that philosophy should be brought into a big ad agency. And so that's really what we're doing. And I have um, a feeling when Kim asked me um, to speak on behalf of the word bravery today, which is like a daunting theme to kind of like channel as a human being. You know, I do not bungee jump. I am a very <laughs> scared and cautious person. But when it comes to like what I do, like for Burnett, you know, that is like kind of, I guess, you know, a bold move to be able to try to figure this whole messy mess out, which it is quite messy. And I think that at the end of it, I'll point out all the designers in the crowd and you can ask them how messy it is. And I can guarantee you they will nod their heads and go, it is very messy. Um, so this is uh, kind of what we work on. So we do corporate work. So that's like for the brand, global and national. We work on campaign stuff. Uh, so again, like 16 out of 30 of the uh, brands that we work on, we try to touch in some way. Um, we work on growth, which is really new business development. We have our department projects. So like if AIGA calls us and says, you know, hey, we want you guys to be um, our, your, their design firm of record, we can like, you know, stand up and say, yeah, that would be pretty awesome. And we did that um, from January to June last year. And then we also work on something called Leo Love. And Leo Love is really great. And it sort of just got started last year where it collected all of the pro bono and philanthropic work that we did under one title and it really like gave us like a channel in which to serve the Chicago community and we do that stuff all the time and so much so that um, I feel like when we pulled our last um, statements of uh, timekeeping we probably waver around 50 percent pro bono and like those sorts of initiatives versus our corporate work and um, uh, Alex Fuller, I, I don't know where he is. I think I see him all the way in the back. He texted me. <laughs> I see him down there. Um, he texted me last night, and he said that he was at the Natasha Jen um, lecture last night, and she said that at Pentagram, they usually work about 60-40, 60% nonprofit, 40% um, actual paying client work, and I, you know, I don't know. Something happened to me. Like, I started, like, smiling, and, like, a big weight got lifted off my shoulders, and I thought, that's cool. So do we, because... Like, it's really weird as a designer to not be doing that. You know, it's like at, at Burnett, we're always so worried that we're, like, working in this unbillable capacity, but all the stuff that we do for our nonprofit folks are really, like, fueling all of our projects that we, we love, and um, we're really, really proud of them. And, again, I, will, I promise to show you some of them soon. Um, this is weird, okay? So um, if you see up here on the top, copywriting art direction so that's like traditional so when those two folks work together at an ad agency that's like the golden like you know 1970s um uh burn back sort of you know formula of like two people coming together and working on an ad and like setting the world on fire um we're suggesting and a lot of people are doing this where you do the blend and i'm being bold and saying you know design art direction and copy should come together like a little triangle. Um, sometimes it's a planner or a producer that should really be in part of that mix. Sometimes this is like just one big, you know, um, polka dotted mess of people working together. But really the core team, when it works best, is nice when you can have a designer in on the partnership and there's more of a trio instead of a duo because then you kind of have a little bit of a different, you know, slant to a project. Designers think about things a little bit differently, and we feel like that really adds a lot to um, the work that we're doing, and that's really all that we're thinking about all the time is how, the we, how we can get the work better. Um, so this thing that we're doing is, is kind of sticky and difficult, as I've described. Um, 
but it's it's cool and we're kind of doing it well right now and I feel like um, our work has gotten a lot better and when I look around at the work that's being <clears throat> pumped out by Leo Burnett Advertising Agency Chicago um, our work is like the work you know there's like some other teams that are doing really great work and then our work is like part of that and and I feel really proud that you know it's sort of starting to work it again is really difficult and it's like you know unhinging this historic um, tradition that's been around for a while but I think if we keep moving forward I think we're gonna be on to something um, and one thing that I um, <clears throat> and probably most proud of that I kind of touched on is this idea of collaboration and and I think like as I explained to you with like the triangle like collaboration is really like the only way that we can exist as teams at you know Burnett and through the Department of Design and as teams in the world and you know we've been kind of talking a lot about this lately that you know, there's just so much energy and coolness going on in Chicago right now that it's really kind of an amazing time. And I feel really lucky and proud to be part of that. Um, and we have, you know, a, a lot of people working on our team right now. Um, we went from four people way back when, like a, four or five years ago, to now 24 people. Um, and so that's like kind of like a huge growth in a four year period. And what I believe is like the whole is greater than the sum of, the, of our parts. We have like a lot of overlap and connective tissue within our team. I'm pretty proud of that. And the way our team works with um, the Chicago design community and the Chicago community at large is something that I think, you know, infuses all of the work that we do. So when I show you some of our work today, which I will in just two seconds, um, you will see that I'm going to just, I, I mean, I usually spend a lot of time curating what I'm going to show you and kind of pick the perfect balance of stuff. I pulled a lot of stuff that's new. I pulled a lot of stuff that um, uh, folks are doing out in the community. And I'm just going to kind of tag them out loud and talk about who they are, who those people are who are doing some of the work. Um, everybody on the team does great work and is like actively working on um, either uh, art or sports or running a family or you know um, doing an art project out in the community or um, actually uh, taking time to <clears throat> build their own projects out in the world so um, I, I really believe that that's like the secret of um, happiness when you work full-time especially when you work nine to five um, so uh, that's that's really cool and um, you know, the creative class is overlapping in really interesting ways. We alone in our department um, with the 24 of us, some of us have like really extreme personal projects. So I told you a little bit about mine. It's called Lampo. Um, Alex Fuller has um, a project, well, not a project. I mean, he's part of the Post family that's, you know, a force in itself in Chicago. Um, Jason Froelichstein has been an um, active member of getting the Chicago Art Department like to be like huge and amazing. Um, we have uh, Todd King, who's part of Acre. Um, we have people in our group are like uh, ongoing participants in Type Force. Um, now, you know, the, the four year anniversary of Type Force. Um, we're trying very hard to be actively um, helping the Chicago Design Museum to be bigger and better. We um, partner with and volunteer with um, AIGA. And I think that there's like a lot of strength in numbers and a lot of crossover in everything that we do with everybody that we do work with. So um, I hope that you'll enjoy some of the work. And um, here's the first thing that I'd like to show you guys. This is probably something you'll recognize. And um, this is a project for Sprint that was recently done by Alex and Jason and Scott. Um, and uh, this is a really fun project. It's called Built for Chicago. And basically, um, people participated all around the city. There were 15 challenges. And so if you decided that you wanted to take a picture of something out in the world, you could tag that in and put that into your Instagram feed. And it could be part of the Built for Chicago um, pictorial community. And all of those images could be judged and then displayed at the um, Modern Art 
uh, wing at the Art Institute of Chicago. So um, this is kind of a cool program. It, it looks cool. It, it helped Sprint really talk about how their connection is like, you know, 10 times faster. They have, you know, their advertising marketing line that they had to put on everything. But really, it was a way for um, creative people to connect in together and then see their work live and big out in the world. And um, the team you know, did the design of these. Um, they, Jason did all the um, illustration of them. And they've been working really hard on Sprint, because Sprint's like one of our biggest, um, most exciting um, things that we've been working on at uh, Burnett lately and in the Department of Design. They've been working tirelessly to like refresh and engage the brand in new and interesting ways and spending you know, all of their energy like really giving Sprint a voice. And hopefully soon as you start to see that trickle out into the world, you'll connect that to, you know, some of the work that we've been doing. So this project was really fun because you could like, you know, take a picture of your hot dog or, you know, a little um, animal and, you know, go online and put it into this big collection of images that um, then were judged by Paul Octavius, who's a wonderful photographer. And there were 2,000 um, uh, photos submitted, and Paul picked 50, and then 10 were on display um, at the Art Institute of Chicago at um, their Art After Dark event last week. Um, and when people got to Art After Dark, um, and I'll just click through some of these screens, when people got to it, there was like this enormous cube that was like in the middle of the event. And um, it was called Chicago by Chicago. And if you could see, like, down in that bottom um, left-hand or right-hand screen, there was this huge life-size cube, and there was this huge interactive display. And you could literally, like, go onto an iPad and pull your Instagram feed um, into that um, digital space and see your pictures kind of come to life and be chopped and diced and, and put into kind of the filters that were created for the event. And that's pretty cool. It's kind of like connecting art and design and advertising all at one. So that was pretty cool. That happened last Friday night. Um, the, those guys worked on this project for months. They've been working on the brand for a long time. And what I think is the coolest part about it is, again, like this overlap of like what we already like to do. Um, I talked a, a bit about, you know, Alex and his um, uh, uh, post family work and um, y you know it, it just it was such a great thing to see um, you know friends of mine through the department who are you know doing beautiful work on the outside and being able to do beautiful work on the inside too and I think that that says a lot about where design is right now in the world um, and Jason here's some of Jason's work um, for the Chicago Art Department um, and so these guys are already like putting on gallery shows and the fact that they got to like put on like the hugest gallery show at the Modern Art Museum for this brand that they've been working on is pretty cool. Um, Scott also worked on the project. Scott um, worked on uh, the AIGA materials, so their snapshot book last year or this past year where it was a collection of posters from people, um, people that collected people's work from all around the um, city and then the back of the posters were like cool little collages of um, the, the more organized front of the poster work. Um, and so that was a really fun uh, project that we worked on for AIGA. Um, the next thing that I'm going to show you is um, I, I really think like a, a great program that's been launched right now for Special K. And you think like, oh, OK, so what, can, what cool thing can you do with cereal? Um, <laughs> which is kind of funny to think about when you get those briefs in. Um, but this is such a great project, and um, some of us worked on it, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit. Shopping for jeans. For many women, it's an overwhelming and frustrating experience. I don't know why that word experience. text is on there, but we'll just Thinking pretend we don't see that. Thinking that you're one size and you try on a jeans and it doesn't fit you, it's very disappointing. And the source of all this dread and trepidation? A number on a tag. The logical part of me realizes that the number's meaningless, yet I still don't feel that way. Special K set out to change that. We created a special line of jeans without sizes. Then we invited women to a one day only jeans boutique. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi. They don't have sizes. Can I measure you? Sure. You are radiant. Oh. Confident. 
I like that size. <laughs> we transform the entire shopping experience into something positive. From the jeans, to a special measuring tape with positive attributes, to inspirational posters. <laughs> Women saw themselves in a new light. Everyone left the store that day with a new pair of jeans and a new positive mindset. The simple act of replacing a number with something positive had a powerful impact for women at the store and beyond. So I'm going to quickly go through this. So you kind of get the idea. And that, that's something that we put together. They're called case studies. So when a project is finished, because it's a big agency, you know, in order to get the idea out into the world, we usually do a little film like that so we can show that to um, our wonderful partners across the world and uh, enter it into award shows and give it back to our clients. Um, these are some of the materials for Special K that were done for this program called Rethink Your Jeans. Labels without sizes on them, measuring tapes, there was even like a little bandana that the folks wore um, in uh, the store that was designed. Um, these you might have seen out in the world. These are beautiful Special K posters um, that actually got into the um, STA archive last year. Um, so a bunch of folks worked on these. Love these posters. So this is a program called What Will You Gain When You Lose? So instead of losing weight, you actually gain something called triumph or spirit or drive. Um, and uh, Kelly and Trisha worked on that uh, Type Force exhibit. Um, and um, they also work on special K a lot. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a connective tissue there. I absolutely love this big number four that hung in the window of Type Force last year. Um, we also do work for cornflakes. And these are two beautiful ads that were done. So it's OK to be old as long as you do old really well. So these ads were issued a couple years ago um, as sort of like historical references for cornflakes. I'm going to go fast because I was told I need to. I've been talking too much. Um, Hallmark, we do brand work for Hallmark. So that was a brand book that we did a couple years ago. Um, ads for Hallmark for a project called Tell Them, where everybody deserves to be heard, um, how much you love or be told that you love them. So could you measure them with data visualization? Um, I'm going to skip over that case study. Um, a uh, project that we do a lot of work on right now is for recipes, and I'll go quickly through this. Um, this is a project uh, where we're bringing uh, people together of conflict over food. And so there was a placemat that was made called our Truce Placemat. Packaging, posters, and that was last year. And then this year, we actually had booths at the Chicago Green City Market and Logan Square Market on Peace Day to promote the idea of peace. And we asked people not just to make a meal, but to make peace. And there's the picture of Casey that I promised him would be in here. <laughs> Sorry, Casey. Um, also, beautiful work done for Allstate. Um, uh, being, in, being invisible should never leave you feel vulnerable, or everything worth holding on to is worth protecting. So um, you know, uh, ads uh, focusing on the LGBT community. And Todd King actually worked on those ads, and he's part of the Acre community, which is his, um, which is uh, uh, arts community and organization that has like a two or three week camp that they host every year for artists and um, visual uh, designers here in Chicago. Uh, work we did for Picasso, and again, I'm going fast, but you've seen the Picasso stuff up. That was done by Natalia. Um, she uh, experimented with typography um, and tried to infuse the idea of Picasso so we didn't have to look at one of his paintings that we know really well. Instead, we can get the spirit of him through looking at type, which I thought was such a beautiful, simple thing. Um, and then, you know, the Picasso letters were put out into da Daily Plaza, kind of an homage to his spirit where people could come and play on them. Um, work that we've done for Chicago Ideas Week, for Think Out Loud, we rebranded them recently. Um, where we took uh, kind of an old-fashioned light bulb and we made it a new fashion way of thinking with icons that represented all the facets that um, 
Chicago Ideas Week is focusing on, and then all of the uh, material kind of played off of those icons and how they work together, and the advertising for that, and exemplifying Think Out Loud in the most profound way. So we have Rahm Emanuel over here and Buzz Aldrin over here. These beautiful ads were designed by Nico Gibson. And this is a work that Kyle Poff worked on for Mama Francesca. Mama Francesca is a cheese brand, and we've been doing some packaging and brand exploration for them. And so how do you make, like, you know, grated cheese look cool? I mean, holy crap. But that is a beautiful <laughs> um, expression and, of uh, packaging. And actually, their sales went up, like, 400% in the last half a year. So I guess maybe design works. Um, and, you know, Kyle does a lot of work out in the community. These are just, like, two things that we grabbed for material magazine that he's done. Um, there's just so much work that he's done, and he's very prolific. So if you need to see more of his work, you can online. Um, we do work for our brand. We do these beautiful books called Where the Wind Blows, and I see Kim has a bunch in her hand, so she'll probably um, give you one, maybe, if you're lucky. Um, these books were made a couple years ago as um, a way to showcase some of the design talent at Burnett, and we've just kept it going. Um, this is the most recent edition um, called Yards that was made for um, Design Week last year when people came down into the city. We wanted to show them where the green spaces were in the city in between all the buildings. And then we, um, the, wind inter the wind interviewed a kite. So if you want to read that, that's available. <laughs> They're both really cool. Um, and then a book that we did for a Christmas gift last year called Apples, where we asked everybody from Burnett to give us their favorite apple recipes, and then we curated it and made a cookbook, which is pretty cool. And here's some of my work to, to kind of end this. Um, that's work for, that I did for Lampo. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of embarrassed to talk about it, but <laughs> um, and we're right now uh, we have a, a show up. Um, again, you know, where the overlap is at the Post family, so Alex's gallery space. We just finished hanging a show there where we're showing 15 years of our archive work, um, which has been pretty fun because we usually keep those in boxes in a storage facility, so um, you can kind of check that out if you have time. And do we have two more minutes for me to show something, or? Um, we're kind of out of time. Okay, so that was it. Um, uh, if you want to learn more about us, um, we have a, a cargo website called lbdod.com. And um, there's plenty of stuff for you guys to check out. It was really um, kind of fun and interesting to think about talking to you guys today. And I hope I gave you a little window into our world and challenged you to get out and do something kind of cool and impossible and uncomfortable. And whether it's um, small or big, just to try something new. Okay. Thank you.